okay then hello 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 everyone hello good evening guys good evening everyone good evening tarun akhilesh subhashini sham nanda leonard utpal torres drex good evening guys good evening everyone please confirm am i audible can you guys hear me am i visible can you guys see me can you guys hear me good evening prabhu good evening guys good evening everyone good evening good evening everyone good evening manoj good evening good evening good evening okay that's great that's great audible and visible that's amazing okay then so good evening guys good evening everyone and welcome back to day 3 which is actually not day 3 we can consider it as day 2.5 because we were we are basically continuing yesterday's lecture so yesterday we understood about an a what exactly is an api how thing work in apis and we understood how to create a server we saw how to handle some basic request coming from a client now right now our client is not a proper front end application but our client is a very simple client thunder client it can also be postman right but our aim today is to use all the logic that we have learned yesterday to create a full fledged api at least a simple one not exactly the biggest api that you will ever create i'm sure that in future we'll be creating amazing apis but today we'll try to create our first api from whatever we have learned and we'll also see how to handle various kinds of request okay uh, sir i watched yesterday's lecture sir because due to my exams i watched the yesterday lecture lecture only now i can say that i can teach to my friends who is facing struggle oh that's amazing akilesh that's amazing i'm really happy that's amazing akilesh okay so guys are we excited are we ready for today's session everyone if we are please don't forget to like this session and let's go let's go so guys yesterday as you remember we created a very simple server okay which is running on this particular uh, ip address with this port number and then we saw how to handle basic request like different request methods so we saw how to handle get method we saw how to handle post methods and we also saw how to handle request coming on different routes right everyone i think we are all comfortable with that now there is no confusion in all that stuff hopefully guys hopefully now there is no confusion in all that stuff right so we can mention the same base address it is the base address it will never change because this is my server address but after that i can mention any route and based on that route for different different route for slash products get method i can do this if the request comes on slash products but if it is a post method i can do this if the request comes on slash users route and if it is post method i can do this and just like that i can define different different endpoints guys this single functionality now i know programmatically it's a very simple if statement but we call it as a endpoint because when someone sends a request they end up being inside one right either they are sending request for this operation or they are sending request for this operation so we can call it as a endpoint right because a person or a front end or a client will try to access any one out of it at one time okay so let's go and let's start everyone okay now one more thing guys as we don't know how to connect node js to a real database as of now don't worry we'll be doing that in the next session the next session is all about connecting our api to a real database but as of now we don't know how to connect our file or code to a real time database that's why for now i have created a json file in which i have inserted some dummy data we will use this file as our database is that clear guys everyone so i have around i don't know i think around uh, 30 40 products in here okay 30 products okay so there are around information about 30 real time products don't worry this file will be shared with you you can also use it so there are 30 products in this file we'll try to use this file as our database remember guys on the first day we have learned how to read and write files so we'll do all those file operations and we'll use this data as a response for our api is that cleared guys shall we start then everyone okay and everyone please focus because i will discuss about each and every method one by one okay i'll first show you how to send you know how to handle a get request then i'll show you how to handle a post request then i'll show you how to handle update request put request delete request one by one and how to work with it how to extract data from request how to send a proper response all that so i need your complete focus for the next one hour okay and also let me open the notepad 
so just you know so that we can just revise the whole thing i hope you guys remember this everyone okay components of request are the base address which we are already using the route which we are already using we always have to use a method while sending a request because because of this method only the server will understand what to do with that request we have not worked with data yet we have not worked with headers yet so we'll work with them right because we have to understand at what time which kind of request to send okay so let's understand them one by one yesterday we discussed them briefly today let's discuss them properly and understand each and everything one by one okay so what i'll do is i'll remove all this stuff for now okay just one simple request and let's keep this on top so that we can understand what's going on so we'll always understand what is the url and what is the method we'll just keep this here now what i want is i uh, see guys my thinking i want to create a endpoint which if a user call if a user calls it i will simply give him all the data so guys understand here okay what the user wants okay actually let me you know uh, open a excel sheet like we can create a simple documentation so let me just quickly go ahead and open a quick excel sheet here so let's quickly do that hi hi positive how are you buddy okay okay i hope guys it's visible everyone so let's divide it into two columns okay hopefully it is visible hopefully it is visible guys okay background noise coming okay just give me one second then wait wait i think today some people are celebrating something in my just below my building so i just have to check okay just give me one second wait 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 hopefully now it should be fine i have closed all my windows and everything so hopefully it should be fine now so yeah let's go okay then let's start guys so see the first thing is okay let me also increase the font size a little bit okay cool okay cool so the first thing that i need one endpoint that a user can fetch all products now guys it's about fetching yesterday we understood right whenever someone wants to only fetch data i don't want to create i don't want to delete i don't want to update i simply want to fetch data in that case a request will be always sent with a get method so we have to handle get method okay so a user can fetch all products i need to create an endpoint which a user or a client can call and fetch all the data that i have in my database and that will be a get request so i have to create an endpoint for this okay and the url which i'm planning the route will be slash products so this is i want if someone sends a re get request on slash products url i want to fetch all the data or let me mention it here okay fetch all the products this is what i want okay so this is the first thing i want if someone sends a get request on slash products i want to simply fetch all the products let's do it that means someone will do this see guys they will write slash product see guys the base address will never change okay so keep it constant base address is this this is my server address okay fine if someone sends a get request on slash product that's all i want to send a response with all the products so let's create a endpoint to handle this request okay everyone we as a api developer we always have to imagine what kind of request may come okay so let's handle it guys so see if the request dot url so if the url is slash products and the method is get correct that is what we want to handle right if the you method is get and in the url is slash products that is what we want to handle but right now i'm simply sending get product data what i actually want to send is all the products but let's see if this endpoint is still working first confirm i will confirm every time that if my endpoints are working or not so let's go and guys also one more thing if you remember guys yesterday what was happening is every time i made some changes in my code i had to restart my application i had to rerun my application again and again so if you want to avoid that headache there is a tool there is a third party tool which is available which is a you can install it use like now guys i hope you remember on first day we talked about npm 
npm is a node package manager which helps you to install javascript related libraries and tools in your project and also it helps to uninstall so now we're going to be using npm to install a tool in our computer which will help us to create a watcher for our application so whenever i make any code changes it will internally rerun my application i don't have to do it again and again okay so see normally what i have to do now i have to run my application by using this node and then index.js fine the application starts running but the issue is if i would make any changes i will have to stop the application i have to rerun again that is something i don't want so now we'll use npm so let's go let's use it guys uh, let me close this sidebar first so let me write a command so guys i'm using the first command of npm to install a third party tool okay so npm the command is npm install so by using this package manager i'm installing and mention hyphen g because i want to install this tool globally in my computer if i don't mention hyphen g this tool will be only installed for this project so in future in future if i have to install any other project or any other tool or any other library or package right so if i create any other project i have to install this again so if i mention hyphen g this tool will be installed globally that means in future if i create any other project i don't have to install it again i can simply run it but if i don't mention hyphen g this tool will be only installed for this particular project this particular folder this one so if i code in any other folder i have to install this again that's why hyphen g and then nodemon that's all this is the name of the tool nodemon and now it will just take a minute maybe and done tool is installed guys tool is installed and see now what you have to do now rather than running your project using node you have to use nodemon think of it like a bot think of it like a bot guys nodemon is a bot what it will do is it will watch your project any time you make any changes and save the changes internally it will run your file that means what you were doing manually it will do it for you it's a automation tool or it's a bot that's all so just do nodemon and give the file name index.js and that's it see internally it is still running this command only which we were running but now we are not going to do it it will handle it now see if i go ahead and just save my project see it restarts it reruns the same command that means now i don't have to worry that means now i can simply keep this down i don't even have to worry about it is that clear everyone what nodemon is doing so it's a very handy tool while developing applications right so any time i save my project see it reruns my project automatically that two second task which i was doing of stopping the application and running it again it's solved now okay hi lekhan how's hi suraj how are you buddy hi murlidhar okay so one headache is gone now we can focus on the project okay so now guys i already have one endpoint which will be called if someone sends a request on this url with this method let's test and yeah it is working but this is not the response which i want to send i want to send the response as the data of this file i want this data to be sent as a response which is inside this file so guys now we have to use our file reading capabilities we have learned that right how to read files everyone so let's go because my data is in my file so I, what i have to do is i have to read this file and then after reading that file whatever data i have got i have to send it as a response so guys how do we read it for that we need a fs module so require to const where is that option come on yeah here we go fs now then we'll do it here only so let's remove this code and now let's read the file guys how do we read it fs dot read file we'll read it asynchronously so that you know it doesn't block any other code if at all something is going on so read file then first the file name so file name is dot slash products dot json we we'll, we are reading this file and then don't mention don't forget to mention the encoding utf8 and then here we know there's a callback function i hope everyone remembers the first lecture guys here two parameters are there either the error or the data right everyone so we know that if there is no error error is null so to make sure we'll always check if error is equal to equal to null that means if there is no error then 
I'm sure to send a good response here. Okay, so response dot end and send the data as it is data. That's it. That should be it. But if there is some error, let's send some error message as a response. So else response dot end. You know something like let's say some text like some problem happened something like that. Okay, everyone. So can you s understand the code everyone here? Okay, let me also remove this code for now. Okay. So now if someone sends a request on this URL with get method, what will happen here? We'll read the file. Okay. And if there is no error while reading the file, we'll send the data that we have read as a response. That means all this data we are sending as a response. Otherwise, if something happened by mistake, we'll send a response of a text message. Some problem happened, something like that. Okay, and I can see there's some spelling mistake here, but that's fine. It's okay. Now guys, should we test it everyone? Let's go. Send. And here we go guys, you got your first response. We got all the data which was present in the file. That means now people have an endpoint where they can call and get all the products back. Now, right now it's a dummy client, but in future it can also be a real time front end project, which can call the exact same URL using get method. Like a, it can be a JavaScript fetch, fetch this URL using the get method and it will get this data. Now they can use this data to display it on the web page. They can do whatever they want once this data is gone. Is that cleared guys? Everyone, can you please confirm? Are we cleared with our first ever endpoint that we have created, which is completely working? Everyone, all set, can you please confirm that? Is there any confusion in here? Because we want to go step by step and understand everything, literally everything. Okay, that's why. Confirm that quickly, guys. All set, amazing, our first ever endpoint. Nice, nice, good. Now, okay, good, very good, guys, very good. Now, see, remember guys, when you read your file, your file was read as a text. Okay, so even though this whole, see, JSON is also a text. So this whole thing is read as text. Okay, don't forget that. Whenever you read a file, no matter what kind of file it is, it reads everything as a text. So we, it looks like a JS object, but it's JSON. That means it's a string. Okay, and we read this whole thing as a string. Don't forget that. Okay, second now. Now then, Let's move ahead and create one more endpoint. Now guys, please focus. The next endpoint is gonna be the very important endpoint right now, okay? So what I want is, let's go back in Excel and discuss again. So where's my Excel sheet? Okay. Second will be again a get request because I want the person to fetch something. So it's again a get request, okay? But this request will be on slash products and then I want the caller or the client to also pass a ID, like ID equals to two, something like that. So what I want is send a request on slash products and also pass this ID like this ID equals two. And if you pass this ID, I will get, or simply just let me mention fetch a single product based on ID. Okay, this is what I want. So if someone sends a request on this URL, slash products, question mark, ID equals to two, I want to fetch a single product based on that ID. As you can see, in my JSON file, every product is having ID. Can you see that guys? Every product is having ID. See, so based on the ID. Understood guys, what I want my next URL to be? What I want my next endpoint to be? But it will also be a get request. So now I'm going to have two different get requests. Okay. Don't forget that I have two different get requests. One will be on slash products. One will be on slash products question mark ID equals to cleared. So basically the user will be sending a query parameter with the URL. Okay. So let's see how to do it. If I have multiple data, can I use inside? Uh, no, 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 no. No, a Drex. Then you have to convert it to an object and then send it as a string. End cannot send multiple strings. Okay. So you have to convert it into an object and then convert it into a string. Something like that. Okay, Drex. Okay. Now then guys, let's move ahead. Now, first of all, we need to understand one thing. Okay, so let's comment this endpoint for a second. 
let's comment this endpoint for a second and let's understand what's going on in url okay so see guys please focus everyone let me open the console i'm only printing the url and the method okay because i want to show you something so let's say i'm sending a request on this send see the url is slash products and the method is get cool nice now even if i go ahead and add question mark id equals to and if i send this request okay first of all see it's waiting for response cancel the request and now send it again see now the url says slash products question mark id equals to but now okay fine if this is the if this is the url will i be able to mention something like you know if request dot url is slash products question mark id equals to because how can we mention this url this is something we can mention like slash products how can we mention something like this because this two is not fixed it can change user might want uh, product with id number 3 id number 5 id number 6 i don't know that means this is very tough for us to mention watch question mark v equals to t okay so guys are you getting the idea everyone are you getting the idea how can i mention something like this like even if i want to mention one more uh, end point like if request dot url is equal to slash products question mark id equals to how can i mention that too we don't know if it will be 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 or 6 that means now the problem is this data will change and we are unable to mention the url properly so guys see till now we were not handling the urls in a perfect way so actually in node js there is one more inbuilt module which helps us to divide the urls properly which helps us to extract data from urls right now we are directly working with a string based url so let me show you how to manage or how to understand urls in a much more better way because now we are facing a problem that our url is coming as a string and some this data will change so how can i mention it properly in my if condition that's a problem so there is a better way of handling urls so there is one more module which will require and the module name is come on the module name okay wow amazing sorry guys the module name is i don't know why it is going on the second line again and again the module name is url okay so this is a module called as url now what this module can do is it gives you a function called as parse you can use that parse function and you can parse this url that you are getting as a string in that function it will read that url and divide things properly for you let me show you so what id is fixed and unique for each parameter yes but so if we have thousands of products komal are we going to write thousands of endpoints for each and every product see my question was for products i mentioned this url okay all good then If someone sends id equals to two, am I going to mention something like this? If request dot url equals slash products question mark id equals two, am I going to mention something like this? Then what if id is three? What if id is four? Am I going to mention different different endpoints for each and every product? So I have to write it thousand times if I have thousands of products, right? That's the issue. That is what we are trying to solve. Is that clear, Komal? Understood the idea. This is the problem. If I mention it for product ID two, what for product ID three then? What for ID four, ID five, ID six? So that's why what we are doing is we are using one more module called as URL, which will help us to divide the URLs properly and we can extract the data separately. Guys, everyone getting the idea, right? Everyone, there is no confusion. Getting the idea here? So let me show you. Let's close the endpoint for a second and remove the method. We don't need it right now. Let's see this. Let's see this. now what i can do is see this request dot url is giving me the url no matter whatever i pass here it will give me that url correct no matter whatever i pass here big url it's what i can do is i can use the module url it gives a function called as parse and pass my url in there request url now see what it does see what it does guys and also guys let's just send a dummy response you know otherwise it keeps loading just send some dummy response something like dummy response okay leave that it is just for dummy response so that the server doesn't hang that's all okay now then let me show you send 
See guys, now that URL module is parsing your string URL and giving you a URL which looks like this. See, protocol slashes. Now we don't have to worry about all those, but see here guys, we are getting a query property separately in which that ID equals to two is mentioned, right? We are getting our path name separately. We are also getting a full path separately. That's the best part. That is the best part, right? But this is not even the best thing. There is one extra parameter which you can pass, which is true. This true means this is the second parameter of parse, which tells that my URL is also going to have query parameters. This true means my URL is also going to have query parameters. Yes, query parameters true. So now see what it does. Now see the best thing. Send and now you can see it's also separating my ID. It's also giving my ID as a separate property. I don't even have to do anything now. I'm getting my path separately. I'm getting my ID separately. And if I pass multiple variables like ID equals to two and let's say name equals saw up something like this. See what happens. It gives me ID and name separately. Understood guys. So now that URL dot parse is returning me an object in which I can have my path name as well. And I can also have my query or property in which I can have my ID variable and my name variable separately available, which I can use now. Is that clear guys? So I'm parsing the URL and getting everything out of that URL separately so that I can use them properly now. Is it cleared everyone? Yes, yes, I'll repeat, I'll repeat, definitely I'll repeat. See, so now what's happening is, let me close this in file now. Initially, see, if, see guys, one, I'm repeating everything once more, okay? If I'm only printing the request URL, if I'm only printing the request URL, no matter whatever I send, it comes as a string. See that, guys? It comes as a string. In my code, it comes as a string, right? That means if I have one variable, two variable, three variables, now what if like if I tell you, okay, can you help me extract two out of this because I want to use it? Or can you help me extract this name out of this? Guys, I have to use string functions. I have to do splitting, cutting of the string to extract the data. Yes or no guys? First problem is I have to mention my URL properly. Second problem is if I want to use that too, and if I want to use that Saurabh, I have to cut my string, extract the name, extract the ID separately because I want to use it, right? I want to fetch some product based on the ID too. I want to fetch some product based on the name Saurabh. The problem is it is a string. And from a string, if I want to extract that too and extract that Saurabh, I have to cut this string because it's a simple plain string. Getting the point guys? That's why it is a very simple URL string. And I, I am, it is very tough to extract the proper path out of it, proper variables out of it, values out of it. If I have 10, 20 variables, then it will become very tough for me. If it is a big URL, then definitely it will become very tough for me to extract everything out of it. That is why what we do is we parse this URL. So we use the URL module, which gives us a function which reads this URL. Okay. So we pass URL dot parse and we pass our URL here, whatever URL we have. What it does is it parses this URL. It reads the URL and parses it and avoid gives us every component of that URL, like this path, like this variable separately. So now if I run it, see what happens now. If I send a request, see, I'm getting everything separately. My query separately, my path name separately, full path separately. See that? So in my query, all the variables are mentioned, but the variables are still a string. My variables are still a string. So I'll pass one more parameter in this parse function, which is true. See, which says parse query string. So I'm saying, yes, please parse it. Second parameter is, do you want to parse query string? Yes, true, please parse it. Query string means this, query parameter. So it has multiple names, guys. Query string, query parameter, URL parameter, it has multiple names. So I'm saying, yes, please parse my query string. Please divide that as well. So that's why pass true. So now it will read this URL and extract everything out of it separately for you. So now if I send, see, I'm getting my path name separately, which is my base path, base route. And then in the query property, I'm getting my ID separately, which I can use name separately, which I can use. 
that means the task see if we didn't have url module that means i have to do everything and it's possible we can use string functions like split and all that we can do it but how many times we'll do it then in future that's why you have url module that is why they have given it because in future this url may be slash products slash admin slash data something like this this can be a very big url in future and see it will separate everything properly for us understood guys everyone hopefully you got it okay hopefully so it is giving us this object okay that means this url dot parse is giving us this whole object so now what i can do is i can store it somewhere we can actually store it somewhere guys we can store it here let's store it here okay so uh, something like you know let's mention um let path or let uh, something like parsed url i'm giving it a good name guys like parsed url and storing that whole object here okay so whatever parsing happens the whole object will be stored here all good now i can use this object use any of this property to do my job okay is that clear guys everyone understood okay hopefully it's cleared okay now then let's move ahead let's move ahead guys let's go now please focus first of all let me show you a few examples guys let me show you a few examples i want to show you a few things guys okay yeah utpal please look at this again you'll understand now so let me print this parsed url because guys now please focus everyone okay i'm going to show you a few things so see if i pass a normal path like only slash products see what happens see okay i'm only getting path name there is nothing in the query i hope you understand why right there's nothing in the query it's empty why guys why query is empty because i am not passing any parameters okay that means whatever you pass like with this slash it goes in the path name property okay so if i pass like you know slash users slash dummy this whole thing is a path okay so again see there's no response coming so let me cancel the request and send again see this whole thing is a path anything that you mention after question mark that is your query string so understand guys there are two main components three main components actually your base address this is your path or the route after whatever you have and if you mention question mark after that you can only mention your variables your query string don't forget that anything that you mention in slashes that's your complete path you can see user slash dummy if i mention users slash dummy slash abc slash xyz slash frg i'm just showing you that no matter how long you go that whole thing is still a path okay basically i'm trying to clear everything here for you so please focus guys i don't want any confusion so yeah see this whole thing is a path okay once you mention question mark you're done you're done now guys don't worry okay in future we'll also have a different kind of url okay but that will be future that will come in express don't worry about right right now right now we are talking about authentic urls how browsers work okay so please focus after this guys whatever you mention after question mark that's your query parameter that is not your path so if i mention id equals to 2 see what happens now that goes as your query see this is your path till frz frg and this id equals to 2 is your query parameter okay don't forget that and that's it then now then let's go so now let's remove this and now let's again make our first end point let's again make our first end point so now guys first of all now we are we are not going to be working with request.url so remove that yes request.method will be still there request.method is get but now guys if i only send a request on slash products so guys tell me this will be only path name do we have anything query no it's only path name right let me show you that as well guys let's comment this again just to show you once don't worry guys i'm going to show you everything wait so let me just show you that console.log parse url now you can see if i send this request see that guys so my parse url object is this whole object 
and inside that we only have path name that's it slash products and this is what i want to use this is what i want to use so this is the property in which this url is mentioned and that's all so now for us it will be like this here i have to mention let me uncomment this so if parsed url dot path name now path name now not request dot url parsed url dot path name is equal to equal to slash products and that's it so if it is slash products and method is get please do this is that cleared guys that's it settled and also let me continuously print the url so that you know we can always see what's going on so now guys if you check it oh why i'm doing two console dot logs okay leave that see this now everyone so now we should get a response send and here we go we got all the products see that everyone we got all the products in our terminal if you see the url we have query is empty because there is no query there is no query here see there is nothing no no query no qu query parameters but path name was products understood guys everyone all cleared hopefully guys now i think everything is cleared no confusions with parsing the url is the whole parsing logic cleared everyone okay now then let's move ahead to our next end point which was this if someone sends a get request on slash products question mark id equals to 2 i want to set a fetch a single product okay so let's go first of all let's try let's try so let's mention question mark id equals 2 now guys focus here okay focus if i send this request you will see i am still getting the same response i am still getting the same response but there is one change in my object now in the query property we also have id 2 but that's fine because see guys our path name is still slash products and here the logic was if the path name is slash products and the request method is get yes my path name is still slash products and my request method is get that's why still this code worked and we got this data same data but now it's up to us to differentiate this so the idea is if i don't send id this query is empty right and if i send id this query will have some data and based on that we have to differentiate now based on that we have to differentiate now is that cleared everyone guys so what we have to do is we have to also mention one more thing so one more condition and path dot query dot id is equal to undefined that means if this is not there then i want to send full data okay let me show you like if i just try to print it path dot query dot id if i try to print it let's say let me remove this first because i want to show you that if it is undefined or not and let's say i don't send this id so what does it print if i am trying to print the id and if i am not sending it what does it print see guys it prints undefined that means only if this id is undefined then i want to send full data so at the same time so if path is slash products and method is get and also same one more condition that is in the url in the query parameter in the query property the id is undefined that means it's not there so please fetch the whole data please send the whole data that's it that's what i want so a big condition but that's fine guys okay cool everyone so our first endpoint is now completely ready with three conditions so if the path is slash products method is get and if there is no id in the url all good send the whole data but now if else if on the same path with the same method but the id is there 
So if the ID is not equal to undefined, that means the ID is there, then what? Then what? So now we need to fetch a single product from that file. But guys, that file is a JSON file. Okay, so when you read it, all the data comes as a text. Let me show you now. So guys, if the path name is slash product, so see guys, if someone sends the ID, so ID equals to, please understand what's happening. So now in your query, you will have the ID. Understood guys? So that's why my condition goes like this. If the path name is slash products, if the method is get, yes, method is get because I'm sending a get request. And if the URL, if the query ID is not undefined, yes, it's not undefined, it's there. Then only now I want to do something here. And what I want to do is first read the file because I need the data. Let's read the file quickly. But guys, see, in our case, we want to read the file multiple times. Here also I'm reading the file. Here also I'm reading the file. So why to read the file again and again, again and again, again and again. Getting my point everyone? Can't we just read it once and then use it multiple times? Getting my point everyone? Because here also I've read my file. Here also I'm reading my file. Here again I'll read my file again. So why to read it multiple times? So let's do one thing. As soon as the request comes, because we know that we want to work with file, what we'll do is we'll read the file. So let's read the file. And this time, let's read it synchronously just to get all the data once at once. Okay. So FS dot, or let's read it asynchronously. That's also fine. But yeah, let's do it synchronously in this case, just for this API example, synchronously, because this is not a real database. So let's read it. Okay. So dot slash products dot JSON encoding is UTF eight. And we know we are reading it synchronously. So in this case, <coughs> we'll get our data directly here. <coughs> so let's call it let products. Okay, so all the products will be stored in here. So now I no longer have to read it. So I have a doubt, why are we using again read files? Sir? Because you read it here, you used it here, and that's it. We cannot use this data outside this area, right? This was a asynchronous reading. It was a callback function. We can't use this data here, right? We read the file, it ended then and there. Right, Akhilesh? We can't use this data outside that callback because that parameter is only available in that callback. Right, Akhilesh? Getting the point? Okay. I hope you're getting the point here. Okay? So that's why what we are doing is now we no longer want to read it like this. No. We'll read it once on the top. That's it. We'll read it here. Done. Read it. And now let's send the data. Okay. So response, simply the base logic is response dot end and send the whole products. That's it. Let's see if it is still working. And yes, I'm still getting all my data. So all good, right? Everyone. And let's test this endpoint as well. So response dot end looks much more cleaner now, right guys? Looks much more cleaner. Everyone for single product. Okay. So let's try this endpoint for this endpoint. We have to send a ID. So question mark ID equals to two and here we go. Yeah, it is working that now we are sure that the endpoint is working. Yes. Endpoint is working. All good. Now what we have to do guys is we have to go in that file and extract one single product which matches the ID which is coming in the URL and you have to send that product. So guys, let's do that. But before doing that, I want to show you something that the file which you have read this products, it is string. It is a JSON string. Let me show you. It is a JSON string. Okay. See the console now. See that guys, it is all white. That means the console is saying it's a JSON string. Now you tell me guys, can we find out data from a string or can we find out data from an array? What we have learned in JavaScript, have we learned finding data in a string, a big string or finding data in an array of objects? Guys, we have learned it. Come on. We have learned it. Everyone. We have learned it in JavaScript. So when we are reading the file, we are reading the whole JSON as a string. That's a JSON string. So guys, how do we convert 
a JSON string into a JavaScript array of objects. We have learned it in JavaScript. Let's see if you can answer. So now we have to convert this JSON string. So guys, whenever we read the file, we are reading it as a string. So we need to convert it into a JavaScript array of objects. So for that guys, we have to use a function called as json.parse, which will convert a JSON string into a JavaScript array of objects so that we can start applying looping and array and all that logic on that. Right? We learned it, right everyone? And now let's see first of all. And see, now if you see the console, it is printing it as a proper array of objects. See, it, it's colored now, so I can identify. Now it's a proper array of objects. See that, guys? Okay. So now it's a proper array of objects. Okay. And guys, for everyone who has not, is not comfortable with JavaScript, I would suggest you to watch my complete JavaScript fundamental course, which is on this channel where you can learn everything because this course is a part of a long going course which we are doing from one month. So if you're new, please don't forget to subscribe and also watch my previous sessions. Okay, so now guys done. Okay, so let's store it somewhere. Let's store it in let products array, something like that. Okay, so now we have the array. And now guys, what we just have to do is we have to find out the data which matches this ID. That's all. We have to find out the data which matches this ID. That is all guys, that's all. And it's very simple, right? In JavaScript, there's a function called as your product array dot, there's a function called as find. Right everyone? Remember that guys? In JavaScript, we have map, filter, find, okay? So in this find, you pass a callback function and guys, this is for everyone who knows JavaScript. I hope you guys remember this, okay? So each and every product will come in this callback function one by one. Okay, so let's pass the product, product, and return that product, return if the product dot ID matches my given ID, which is this one, which is the ID coming in the URL. If anywhere this ID matches my ID, return that product, and that product will be available here. Right? So guys, this is JavaScript find function. I hope everyone remembers this. Yes, map filter find. So this is find. So in from that product array, please find the product where the product ID matches my given ID, which is coming in URL. If it matches, return that product and it will be stored in this. Just to confirm, let's log it. Console.log product. Let's see. And in the console, guys, are we finding the exact same product with the ID two? Yes, see, with the ID two. If I pass ID three now, see, yes. But what if I pass which ID is not there? Let's say 90, this ID is not there. And see, we get what? Undefined, is that cleared guys? So now we can do two things here. So if product that we have, we have found, if it is not equal to undefined. That means we got something. So in that case, send a response of that directly that product. But guys, one very important thing here now that you cannot send a JavaScript object as a response. Let's see that if it is working. Let's see. Let's try to fetch. Let's see. I don't. I don't, maybe there's an update. And here we go. See guys, the issue. See, there's an issue now. See, invalid argument. The chunk argument must be of type string. That means they're saying you cannot send a JavaScript object or a JavaScript array as a response inside the end function. It should be a string only. See, the reason we were able to send the whole products here because it was a string, right? Here, we converted that string into a JavaScript array we found out the one object that we wanted and now we are trying to send that object. It can't go because it should be a string. So guys, just like we used json.parse to convert string to object, how can we convert object back to string in JavaScript guys? There's a function called as json.stringify. So, we'll, so guys remember always while sending it should be a string. Okay. And if you want to work with it, just convert it to objects. That's it. And yeah, if at all there's some issue, we'll send a message. 
so one more message one message here and guys i also want to send my message as a string sorry as a json but again it's a object i cannot send it like this so again json dot stringify and then let's say a message so if at all so not undefined then send the product but if that product is not found so message product not found something like this okay and now guys time to test it everyone so id2 send and here we go you got your data you got the proper response see that id5 here we go and if i pass id9 sorry id90 something like that product not found all cleared guys everyone our second endpoint is also ready and working completely fine okay so now we have made two endpoints and that's amazing it's working everything is good right everyone and hopefully guys you're enjoying so if you're enjoying please don't forget to like the video and also if you're new please don't forget to subscribe to the channel okay all good amazing okay so now guys two endpoints are done and now let's move on to the third endpoint which is which is going to be a post endpoint which will be for what guys for creation of a new data so we already have 30 products in our file we already have 30 products in our file so to add more products now to add more products we have to create a post endpoint right because guys we use post request right post method for creation so let's go so now the next endpoint will be a post on the same url slash products on the same url if someone sends a post request on the exact same url guys now see guys url is same url is same but the method is post so the method is changing right so create a new product by sending data through request okay now guys see here we are planning to send the data through request now see guys this what we are doing here this is also we are sending data through request this is also sending data through request but this is small data guys remember through urls you can only send small data because url has a limited size so if you want to send big data like see if i want to create a new product now guys focus here if i want to create a new product that means i have to send this whole big data like this yes or no guys if i want this is i already have 30 products now if i want to create a new data i need to send this much information for a new product id title description price discount rating brand a lot of things correct and this is a big data i cannot fit this whole data in the url that's why guys we don't use urls for whenever we want to create a new data because that new data can be big and you cannot fit all that data in your url url is for small data like this id small name two three data for a data like this we don't send it through urls so now according to our logic we are also going to be sending data through request we have seen all this now we have seen base address ip address route url parameters as well so let me mention it we have also seen url parameters and now we're going to be sending data through so guys this is the data that you send is sent through request body this is called as request body guys this is called as request body so you have already sent data through url now we're going to be sending data through request body so let's go and let's do it everyone and it's going to be very a little complicated not tough a little complicated okay so please focus everyone guys whatever you are learning here when we go ahead on tuesday or wednesday when we'll start learning express in express things will become 70% more easier trust me only because you have learned the hard tricks that's why things will become 70% more easier you are learning node js at the very core okay hi david how are you buddy okay so let's go guys so now i'm planning to send a post request okay so where is our excel sheet now i'm planning to send a post request on this url so let's go 
so sending a post request on the same url but as i said now i'm going to be sending data with it right so how to send data that's very important so guys if you're using some coding language or some front end uh, application there it will be do done via coding but here this is our client so how to use this client to send data through url i'm not sending now so now i have to send it through request body so here you can see there is a area called as body tab open it and now here you can mention the data that you want to send this is your request body data and see how many formats you can send your data in json format xml format text format form format form and code graphql binary but we are interested in json we want to send our data in json format is that cleared guys so we have to mention it here in the json tab and for easiness guys no issues you can simply copy one data fr format from here so let's copy this whole thing one single data format okay copy it here that's it and now make the changes so let's say id will be 31 let's say this will be like you know something like cup and guys other thing can we keep same so that we don't waste time what say guys like you can change it but let's keep it same okay fine this is my final data this is what i want to what i want to send is that clear guys everyone i'm just keeping the other thing same because that's fine for now okay i'm just changing the id and the name so that we can identify that this is the new data okay everyone i'm keeping the other things same so that we don't waste time in mentioning all that different things okay so let's keep the other thing same so now guys i'm sending a post request on this url and this is my data so now how to handle that here because now not only request with request data is also coming right guys everyone with the request data is also coming now so we have to now and handle it properly initially only get request was coming either directly or with a url parameter but now no now a big data is coming in the request body as well okay so let's handle that so first of all guys basic endpoint else if first thing if request dot method is what guys post and what's the url it is slash products only so and parse url dot path name is equal to equal to slash products okay and now we have to handle it here but now guys the issue is okay so first of all guys we learned one thing today that how to read or how to access the url parameters in our node.js code now we need to learn one new thing today that how to access this data this particular data which is coming in request body in our code so for that guys we need to do a little bit of understanding first so for that i'll open a jam board guys please focus everyone okay so let me just go to the last frame okay now guys let's say this is your backend server please focus everyone this is very important this is your backend server now this is your front end now it can be a front end application or it can be a dummy client like postman or thunder client whatever it is doesn't matter whatever it is okay it can be your testing client which is acting as a front end or it can be your real front end app doesn't matter they are going to they are go both going to do the same thing they are going to be sending the request now guys what happens when a request is gone whenever a front end or a testing client both of them are front end they send a request remember guys a stream a request stream is established between the client and the server remember guys a stream is simply for now just think a stream is simply through which the content flows so whenever a request is sent from the front end to the back end a stream gets set a stream is settled up there the whole request flows through that stream and then the stream is closed it's ended or you can simply think of it as a connection stream or connection but technically we call it as a stream is that clear guys stream is like a pipe through which the data flows so a stream is established all the things related to request go there and then the stream is closed cancelled deleted done okay for every request for get put patch post everything so for get request the stream is very short lived request is sent stream established you are later goes stream closed done but now when you are sending a post request 
यू आर सेंडिंग अूज अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा यू आर सेंडिंग अूज अमाउंट ऑफ डेटा सो गाइज नाउ दिस स्ट्रीम बिहेव डिफरेंटली नाउ वट हैपन्स इज सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू वॉन्ट टू सेंड अ रिक्वेस्ट सो अ स्ट्रीम इज एस्टाब्लिश्ड नाउ सिंस यू हैव अ बिग डेटा दैट यू वॉन्ट टू सेंड थ्रू द स्ट्रीम दिस डेटा दैट यू आर सेंडिंग गोज चंक बाय चंक बाइट बाय बाइट a small part like this much then this much then this much then this much it goes chunk by chunk one by one it goes in chunks for one request yeah for one request one unique stream so now guys that means the post request takes more time now it can't be that much time that we have to actually we can see how much time it is taking but it takes a little more time because now you have a huge amount of data and that data goes chunk by chunk byte by byte are you getting the point everyone now we don't exactly know that how much will be going in one byte but just consider it goes byte by byte that means this data may be divided into 10 chunks 20 chunks 30 chunks and it will go chunk by chunk chunk by chunk that means and see how it is going that's not our concern it will go but on the receivers end we are the ones coding we are the ones coding so we will be receiving that data chunk by chunk so we have to take care of that are you getting the point everyone guys got the idea okay so this whole data will go as a string chunk by chunk chunk by chunk that is very very important to understand okay so let's go and let's see how to handle it on the api so now it's a post method and the data will be coming okay chunk by chunk okay so how to handle it Oh, let me show you one thing first let me show you one thing let's see if there is something in the request actually there is nothing in the request if i have to just check the request for now and if i send it let me show you guys let if i print the request object whole request object let me show you now and let me send a dummy response okay i'm just printing the request just to show you what's coming in the request when i'm sending a request for post on this url with this data what's coming let me show you so let me open the console okay and let's see what's coming in the console now let's send this request see guys now post request is working all good and now if you check here okay did i ah uh, my bad guys i wanted to send a response wait come on man response dot end okay okay cool done see response is coming now let's see our console to see what is happening in the request so now if you look at it your request guys you will see that there is no data so stream control how much yeah we can control it not the request stream but response stream request stream i don't think we can control i, I think we can uh but not if it is coming from a browser or a client then not then we can't but if you are coding it then we can now guys let me show you that data is here and you can't read it because it is coming as a chunk of data like uh, you know in chunks and in different format you can't see it it will be in a readable stream something like that i have to check it out where it is mentioned like it's a very big object so do we have a data property here no uh body yes body 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 okay no it's not available here but it should be somewhere like in in chunks it should be mentioned in a readable stream so okay, see guys what i'm trying to say here is your data is not directly available here your data is not directly available it is coming as a readable stream through which you have to extract your data so it's coming chunk by chunk in a readable stream that's what you call as a stream it's this is the stream that you have established this is the readable stream and your data is going chunk by chunk so on the server side you have to read this data chunk by chunk and combine all that chunk together to form a final data okay so let's go so for that guys 
the request object has few events which we have to use the request object has few events which we have to use so while the stream is alive and chunks are coming so you have to use a event which is called whenever a chunk is received called as on on data this particular event is fired this on data event is fired whenever a new chunk is received so let's say your data is divided in 10 chunks so this function will be called 10 times this event will be called 10 times okay and and that chunk of data will be available here in this callback function here chunk let's let's call it chunk you can call it anything guys i'm calling it as chunk is that cleared guys and you can access that chunk of data here is it cleared everyone so this method this event so request whenever request this data event is called every time a new chunk is received it's fixed guys you can't change it data is the name of the event so in this request whenever this data event is fired a new chunk will be received in this callback function that chunk will be available and my job is what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a variable called as product which will be initially a blank string a blank string and what i'll be doing is product equals to product plus e sorry e plus chunk so every time that chunk is received i'm going to add that chunk to product so initially first chunk so initially product is blank string good first chunk received so product plus chunk blank plus chunk so that chunk will be stored in product now next time the new chunk will come so product which is already the previous chunk plus the new chunk and just like that chunk plus chunk plus chunk all the chunks will be combined and finally in your product you'll have the whole data as a whole is that cleared guys everyone please confirm that are we cleared with this and then there is one more method that is fired once the whole chunk is received the whole data is received and the event is completed which is end and guys trust me when we go on to use express you don't have to do all these things but because internally express is doing all this for you i hope you're getting the idea right we are not directly jumping on express because we also want to understand how things goes inside express express is a module which is created using the http module internally it is built on http module so we are learning the core part so on end this event is fired when the whole chunk is received the chunk of the data, yeah it is in string format yes suraj yes 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 buddy yes correct correct yes so once the whole chunk is received this function is called okay so now here just this function is only called when the whole chunk is received and stream is ended closed so now i can print that product here and let's see so guys simple if the request method is post and the path name is slash product whatever is coming i know definitely that this is the request okay i know that this is going to be the request so this data will come chunk by chunk i'm going to collect all those chunks and concatenate yes akhilesh yes rishikesh it's concatenating yes you can say that we are concatenating and then we are printing the whole product once the chunk incoming ends the stream ends we are printing the whole product let's see now if it is working okay let's go this was the toughest part guys this was the toughest part of the whole api other than this everything is easy the send and here we go guys see that the whole data is here see that everyone and what we can do is we can also print the chunks to see what's happening i have i don't print them ever so i don't know what they will print but let's print the chunks one by one just to see what's going on in there okay let's print the chunks also every time we receive it let's see if it is working see guys the chunks are coming in a different format okay they are coming in a different format but that's okay that's okay that's cool okay so this end method inter sorry this end event internally handles all that yeah positive what is the confusion tell me what's the confusion buddy let me explain it again guys now this was the code example let me explain you again so there are two events request dot on data request dot on end so on is simply the name of the event guys request dot on that means on is 
whenever the request comes, there are two events that will happen, data event and end event. Let me show you what's gonna happen now. So, um, we have two methods, let me go on that Jamboard. So we have request dot on data and here we are receiving the chunk and inside this we are concatenating it okay simple and then we also have a method called as end okay two methods now guys please focus what are we doing here so let's say our data is divided into one, two, three, four, five, six chunks. Okay. So this is an event positive. This is an event which we are not calling. We are simply using it. It is getting called internally. This is an event. In this case, this event will be called six times because we're going to be receiving six chunks. So as soon as the first chunk come, this will be called. Okay. So according to that logic, what we are doing inside it, we are doing products equals, so let's call it as P, not products. P equals P plus chunk. Okay. So what's going to happen? Let's say this chunk comes. First chunk is here, which will be available in this variable. So request dot on data is the event which is called when the first chunk is received. So as soon as the first chunk is here, this event is called, this callback function is called, and this chunk is available in this variable. So I'm adding that chunk. I'm saying chunk plus P, which is simply a basic string. So P plus chunk, first chunk is stored in this P. P equals to P, which is blank plus chunk. So that first chunk is stored in this P. Done. Now the next chunk arrives and this function is called again. So again P. Now P was having the last chunk already. So now the new chunk as well. So now this P is having the combined two chunks. Now then the next chunk. So two plus third chunk, next chunk, three plus fourth chunk, next chunk, four plus fifth chunk. That means there are a total of combination of five chunks now. Then the last chunk arrives, five plus one, six chunks. And as soon as the last chunk arrives and the stream closes, this function is called. And inside this function, you can access that whole data. And this function also makes sure because see your chunks are coming in bytes in binary. So this end function also makes sure that that binary is converted to string. So, but we didn't specify the number of chunks. We don't have to, we don't have to. This request is sent via client. We don't know, right? The client is the deciding person in how many chunks he will send. That can be 10 chunks, 20 chunks, 30 chunks. If it is 30 chunks, this will be called 30 times. If it is 100 chunks, this will be called 100 times. We don't have to worry about it. If it is 2000 chunks, we don't have to worry. This will work 2000 times. At the end, what we want is it should be working fine. That's all. Because we are not one, we are not the one sending the data, right? It is some client. Right now, it is decided by this, this client, in how many chunks it will be sent. Most of the times it is fixed. Most of the times it is fixed. Is that clear, Rishikesh, buddy? Whether the data is called as chunk, it is JSON. See, for example, if I uh, have a apple, and if I cut some part of it, it is still apple, but that's a chunk of apple. Chunk is a word, English word, which we use for small part of something, right, Rishikesh? So it is still JSON data, chunk of JSON data. It's a still a JSON string. Like for example. If this is my JSON string, see, if this is my JSON string, if I take this much, this is chunk of my JSON string. So let's say in the first chunk, this much comes, then in the next chunk, this much comes, then in the next chunk, this much comes. So it's like that, piece by piece it is going. Is it cleared, uh, Akhilesh? It is still JSON data. Once it arrives at the API, the whole thing is converted to JSON again, string, JSON string or you can say string. So everything is getting sent, these brackets, everything. So at the end, when it arrives, it is string. So when it arrives on the API, it is still string. Now we have to convert and that string looks like JSON because it's having brackets. So we can convert into JSON object, JS object. 
Yeah, we can update it. Don't worry, I'll show you how to update. We are still at create, right, Komal? We'll also do update, don't worry. And now it should be simple. Update will be very simple, don't worry. This was the toughest part, guys. I hope everyone has understood this. This is why people don't learn HTTP module. They directly jump onto Express. This is the reason. These two methods are the reason that they directly move on to, you know, Express. They don't learn HTTP module. So now, guys, we have got our data as a JSON string. See, in the console, if it is white, in the VS Code console, if it is white, it's a string. So guys, it is a string now. Okay, and now we want to write that into this file. So how will you do it? See, now focus everyone, please focus. We'll do it here. Remember guys, here it will be in binary. Okay, this end function converts this whole string of binaries to a proper string that we want to use. Okay, so that's why this end function is important. It internally converts those bytes or those binaries into a proper string format. Now, that product will be accessible as a string format in here. So how are we gonna use it? Now see guys, it's a string. So first of all guys, see, have we read out the file? Have we read the file everyone? Have we read the file? Yes, correct? That means the whole file as a string is here. When we call products from a client, it is also comes. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Everything on the internet right now, my stream is also coming to you in chunks. That's why it buffers sometimes. When the chunk is not received, the video starts buffering. Everything that you're seeing, your chat messages are coming to me in chunk. Okay. So now guys, we have already read the file in this products variable. We have all the data as JSON string. We have all the data as string. So first thing is we'll convert that into JS object. So let's do that again. Let product array equals JSON dot parse products. Okay, guys, everyone. Okay. So again, I'm converting the JSON string, which we have read from the file into a array. Okay, everyone. Now this is the array of all the 30 objects. We already have 30 objects, right guys? We already have 30 objects. Now we have also got a new object, but it is in string format. So guys, how do we convert into object? It is in string format. This new data that we have got, it is in string format. So how do we convert into object? Same logic, let product or let's call it as new product just to make sure it is readable new product same thing right equals json dot parse the product that you have got this one right this one so now guys you tell me we have an array of 30 objects okay and we also have a new product which is an object so do we know how to add a new element in the array? Yes. In that array, in that products array, parts product, have I done some mistake somewhere? Utpal is saying I've done some mistake, products. Product, not products, products. Products, right, it's, the name is products. See, yeah, it's products. Correct, the file that we have read. So products, okay. So in the products array, line 54. Uh, products array, so what's the issue, buddy? No, it should be products. Right, this is, we are converting the file data into an array. Then we are converting the data that we have received in the request into an object. And then we are pushing this new data. So we are array has a push method, right? So in that array, please push this new product that we have received. See guys, the logic. We have read the file. We have read the file in a string format. We convert that whole string data into an array, first thing, right? And then the new product which we have received in request, we also convert that into an object. So we have one array and we have one object. We put that one object into that array. 
by using the push method and that's it but now guys it is only in the array we also have to rewrite the file so that the file also gets updated yeah we can also append this is what this is what you call as appending akilesh this is appending but we cannot append in file because when you append in file it will be appended after this bracket right how will you append after this only because the new data should be here but if you append it will be appended after this bracket right if it goes outside the bracket then it doesn't make sense it should stay inside the array that is the reason we are converting the whole json to array and then inside that array we are adding the product so if we can append see the logic akilesh if i append this string into my file it will be appended like this right it will be appended here like this outside the bracket then how then in future if i want to read it how will i read it got the point got the point akilesh that's why we can't append here that's why no appending so we are reading this whole json string converting that into an array and whatever data we got converting that into a an object and putting that new object into the array and now it's time to update the file so now it's time to write the file so fs dot write file which file dot slash products dot json and my data is gonna be json dot again guys you are writing so you have to stringify you cannot write objects you have to stringify your whole products array this new array as a string and if there is no error so if error is equal to equal to null simply send a response so guys you have to understand two things here when to parse and when to stringify just understand where we want a string and where you want object whenever you want to do javascript stuff convert into object whenever you want to do string stuff sending response putting in file convert into string so message is going to be new product created understood guys everyone what's going on here is this whole endpoint cleared now i think it should be understood everyone guys i know it's a little tricky but i hope you're understanding you're creating apis come on it should be a little tricky right but that's why we are going step by step guys and you will have to practice that's why guys this sunday that is there i want you guys to practice it completely okay so guys please understand initially we have read the file always don't forget guys initially we have read the file as a string so let me mention it here reading the file as string data okay so this products is a string data and for the basic request we are sending the string data because yes we want to send a string but the second time now we want to extract the data based on id so guys we want to do js operation thing guys try to get my idea into your brain so that you will never con get confused now based on the id sent by the user i wanted to fetch a single data from that whole array but when i read the file it's a string and i cannot operate i cannot do js operation on a string that's why i converted that string into a array of object because it's a json string so it can be converted guys you cannot convert any normal string into array of objects this is the json so this can be converted into a array of objects so i converted i found out the exact object that i wanted and i again sent it by converted to string there was no changes needed in the file because we just want to send a single data to a user but now here you are receiving a data as a string and you want to add that into the file you want to add that into your database database is your file but you can't directly add in the file because if you append in a file it will be appended here that's why we again convert the read data from that file into a array whatever data we got from request this this one we also convert that because it's also getting received as string we convert that into a object and then push that object into that array so now we have this array which is having 31 products 
Initially, when I read the file, it was having 30 products. I add this new product, so now it's 31 products. But now only the array is having 31 products. I want my file to be updated. So now I overwrite the whole file with my new array. But guys, I cannot directly put the array. So I convert the array into string. Got it guys, everyone understood the whole idea. And now time to test it. Guys, time to test it now. Shall we test it everyone? Let's go. Send and here we go, new product created. Now this is not the big deal, the file. We have to look out the file. Let's see the file guys. And see, the file format has changed. That means something happened. So now guys see, this format is looking very bad. So how to change the format? Control A, select everything, right click, format document and that's it. And now see guys, here we go. You also have the 31st product. And now you can add as many products as you want. Because next time, when the file is read, it will have 31 products. And if you add new, 32, 33, 34, 35, just like that. Let me show you. If I add one more now, let's say the ID is 35. And let's say the new product is mouse. So now what will happen guys? Again, same operation. This data will go chunk by chunk. Correct? Chunk by chunk. Then we'll read the whole file. Correct? We'll read the whole file. Now if we read the file, we will get 31 products. So now this array will have 31 products. And my new product will be this. Right? And then again I'm overwriting the file with the new set. And now guys tell me, after this, how many products will we have? Guys, how many products will we have? 32, exactly. Please don't say, please don't read the ID and say 35 products. ID can be anything. 32 products, exactly. Right? See, the last one and the latest one. Understood, guys, how simple it is. I know it's not very simple, but now, guys, because of this, your API development logic will never fade away. You'll understand everything that is going on inside no matter which framework do you use in future. So you should start online tutoring on a regular basis. Uh, amazing. Thank you so much, Komal Pri. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yes, definitely. But yeah, this is what I'm doing on YouTube right now. But yeah, I will also do that. I think you're meaning, you're, uh, you're telling me to take like, you know, direct sessions, right? On some platform. Yes, definitely, Akhilesh. No issues, buddy. Definitely, definitely. So guys, are we cleared with all these three kinds, everyone? Hopefully, everyone. So now we are done with the post, we are done with get single data and we are also done with, you know, uh, sending all data. We have three endpoints up and running and working. Okay, now guys, these are the three endpoints. After this guys, everything is easy. After this, everything is easy. So now do we have two endpoints remaining delete and update okay so now we'll do it when we join on monday so the second half of the this it's almost done so now the second half of this project will be done on monday which are two more endpoints and then after that we'll move on to connecting our node.js to mongodb so that in future we don't have to work with files we can work with databases what is the difference between two string and just a node stringify Two string is con is used to convert any kind of data to string. Stringify is specifically used to convert JSON array or JSON, sorry, JavaScript array or JavaScript object to JSON string. Two string array, two, sorry, two string is used to convert any random data to string, anything to string, number to string, boolean to string. Stringify, JSON or stringify is specifically used to convert JavaScript object and JavaScript array to a JSON array or a JSON object. It's specifically for JSON, Drake. Is that cleared? So guys, so today's session is so tricky, but you make, that's what I'm trying my best to do. So guys, now I have a homework for you. If you can do it, you have a Sunday with you. You have Monday's complete morning with you. So what I want is I want you guys to create this much whole API. Now I'll upload this, but please don't copy and paste it. 
I want you guys to do the exact same thing but by just taking the reference and write the whole code by yourself step by step by understanding everything. Is that clear guys? Everyone? Because now we have two more kinds of request. One is for update which is put request and one is for delete which is delete request. Okay, we'll be continuing that because I don't want to burden everything on you as this is not a recorded session so you can like this will be recorded but I don't want to burden you. I want you guys to please 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 take your Sunday and practice it because guys if you don't practice all the things that I'm doing here will go in vain. So please practice. Take your Sunday, take your Monday's first half and practice it because now I'll directly see you on Monday when we'll first complete this API in the first half an hour. It's very easy. Now we'll easily complete it very easily. And after that, we'll move on to connecting our node to MongoDB. So in future, yeah, this data will be also available to you. Yes, yes, yes. The GitHub link of this whole course files is available in the description, Rishikesh. So all these things, all these files are uploaded. Okay. Sir, sometimes error comes. So if error comes, uh, try to find out why this error is coming. Debug your program. Try to find it on internet. And if all, that doesn't work, then I'm here. Don't worry. Initially, it will happen. Initially, errors will come. It will look tough. But slowly and steadily with practice, Komal Preet, you'll start understanding errors. Errors will always come, no matter how expert you become. But tackling it is very important that you will learn slowly and steadily. Sir, exams going on and missed most of this session due to node 1 error. Okay. Okay, no issues, buddy. You can still watch the recording. Okay. So guys, okay, let me just add a few comments. Until that time, guys, please, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And guys, please don't forget to share the channel with your colleagues, your friend, your college friends. Please don't forget to do that because it will help me grow a little bit. And please don't forget to like the session. And guys, once this whole course is completed, if at all, you guys can go on your LinkedIn and post about this course and about what happened in this course, what you did, what you learned. That will be really amazing for you once it is completed. Okay. I'm just reminding you that. And please share the channel with your friends and people, right? I'm, I'll just put some comments. Fetch all the products. Fetch products. Fetch product based on ID create new hi Thor how are you buddy guys and yeah if you want your code to be checked by me what you can do is you guys can also upload your code on github make a repository upload it and share me the link so that I can check it there and I'll check it and I'll suggest you some solutions. We can also check, I can also check it, you know, live, no issues. I can check it. So, but for that guys, whatever you're doing, please keep it on GitHub and share the link with me so I can see your code there. Is that clear guys? Okay. And also guys, one more thing. Remember in Node.js, if you're doing, if you're using HTTP module, the score module, the way of reading the body data, guys, remember this is the request body. Remember, this is request body. The way of reading body data will be always like this. These two methods. You always have to use these two methods to read body data. So in future, while updating also guys, we have to send body data. So we'll again use these two methods only. For update also, we'll use these two methods. So don't worry about that as well. It will be very easy. Okay. Called for every chunk received this event is called at the end of stream and converts bytes to readable string okay so i'm just putting some comments guys so that you can read and understand yes exactly so just putting this okay i hope everything else doesn't require a comment right Everything else is fine because you have understood it here only and the recording will be available to you. So no issues in that. Okay. So all good guys, everyone, hopefully how to comment a sentence fast, a uh, control slash Leonard. So just go on that line, control slash to comment and control slash to uncomment. Okay. 
so guys hopefully by monday i'll also get your github links where you guys have will be uploading this code and all that stuff right hopefully hopefully okay please practice guys because without practice nothing will happen it's all, even more important than me teaching you practice is the most important thing in this world no matter what you want to become so please practice please like the stream and share the channel with your friends and i'll see all of you on monday enjoy a good sunday take some rest play some sport eat good food and i'll see all of you on monday bye bye guys good night everyone it was so nice to see you thank you so much for joining i'll see all of you on monday okay bye bye guys good night everyone good night happy sunday happy sunday good night guys